So here is the little blower project. Start things off. I'm bringing power in with this cord here, going into this disconnect here. And I am getting power from this wall jack here, bringing in 208. And coming off of this disconnect here, these white wires here, are coming to my transformer which are stepping it down from 208 to 120. Coming off of this transformer here is coming to my e-stop and daisy chained into my reset button here. These both require 120 to be powered. These two inputs here are creating a latching circuit with this SPR relay. And I got my power on and bypass LED here. This power on is just coming straight into this relay here, which is then coming off my transformer. So whenever there's power enabled, this will always be lit up. I got these two other relays underneath which help with the different modes here. I got AFC and bypass. This bypass mode is used just to run the motor off of the line power. And this AFC mode is used to use this frequency drive and sensor to tell the motor at which speeds to run. And those two relays on the bottom of these auxiliary contacts are both being powered by 120. So if I were to choose an AFC mode, it would then close three contacts on this dock here relay. And that would then close up these terminals going to my VFD to tell it to run at the speed it needs to run. And this bypass mode also has three relays coming from this BC underneath there to tell the motor just to run straight off line power. <clears throat> and I'm also using a normally closed on both of these relays here so that it can create an interlock with this switch here so it's not able to run in both modes at all. So since these inputs here are being powered by 120, I am using a set of normally opens on this SPR, BIC, and BC auxiliary contacts that are being powered by 24 volts coming from this power supply here. These are just all being daisy chained in here and being brought back to my inputs here, which are brought up into this 24 volt sink input there. The reason I'm doing that is so that I don't bring a 120 into this point IO, which would then damage the card. I'm also using a 4 to 20 milliamp analog input, an analog voltage input, and a voltage output card. This 4 to 20 milliamp analog input is just got my sensor wired in, which is coming over here. Just got put in the same terminals there which is then brought up to there. I also got my motor leads right here, coming from power there. Then being brought into this overload here to power my motor and protect it. I got my analog voltage input and voltage output 
coming down into here, which then are being brought out here into these terminals here on my VFD so that it can talk to my PLC and then tell my motor what speed to run at. So to show you the process itself here, I'm going to be using the AFC mode here first, which is going to be running with this VFD here. And if you watch here, you will be able to see the frequency change and ramp up. So right now I got the blockage all the way open, so the motor will have to start running pretty hard at the beginning here. So I'm gonna turn on AFC here. Okay. Now that it's up to frequency, got the motor here running, got my blockage up there, and I got my sensor there reading in the box, the difference on both sides there. So I'm gonna close up this blockage here and it sh the motor will begin to slow down because it's not gonna have to work as hard there. So we'll close it up to about there. If you listen, you'll be able to hear the motor wind down and here you can see the frequency begin to go down looks like we're gonna be around 50 there and if i turn it off here power you can see it go back down and when I go into bypass mode here it will not be using this VFD and that will just be running straight off the line power <clears throat> no matter if I change the blockage or not see I got my bypass light on there letting me know that I'm in bypass mode coming over I can release the blockage here and I can close it all the way up and the motor is going to stay at the same speed and that is how a VFD works with a motor. So here is my AutoCAD for the little blower. To start things off, we can go over to my point IO here. <clears throat> so going into the six slot here, we have voltage, which is just coming for them. 24 volt DC here, and then four going into common, and this will be powering all of these cards here. Over onto 1734 IB4, which is a 24 volt DC sync input. We have these three contacts here, which the first one being my reset button, going into a terminal block, Three going into my input zero, and then this next contact here, BC, which will be my bypass for my selector switch, going into terminal block nine, going into my input one, and then this next one we have this SPR contact, which would be my AFC switch which these two are the same selector switch, just different modes here. Going into terminal block 10, input 2, and we don't have anything else going down here. 
and the reason we are using these contacts here instead of just bringing the actual input itself back to the card is because the inputs are powered by 120 and this card only takes 24 volt DC and we did not have a 120 volt card here so to fix that we just brought 24 volts to these relays to power them and then we just brought the contacts back to the inputs going over to our next card here we got my pressure sensor and we got the pressure sensor just going straight into input zero here and then we have voltage going into this six port here and we want to bring in this pressure sensor so that it can communicate with my PLC and it will be able to tell the motor how fast to run to keep up with the pressure in the box of the little blower. Going over to our next card here, we have an analog voltage input and we have the VFD port AM going in to the terminal block 12 here, going into my input 0. And here is my AM slot here, or port, I guess you would say. And then we just have the VFD port 5 common coming from there on the port 4. Here would be my common for my VFD. Going over to our next card, the analog voltage output. We just got VFD port 2 going into terminal block 11, going into the input 0 here. Here's my VFD port 2. And the same thing here, we just have the VFD port 5 common. Coming from terminal block 2, different terminal block instead of this one. And here's my port 5 again. So that is it for my point IO. Coming over to the actual drawing here of the whole process we got our line power here got like one like two like three which all go into a circuit breaker and this is all coming from 208 and then coming into overloads here to protect the motor and then these motor leads are just going into overload 2T1, overload 4T2, and overload 6T3. <clears throat> and then coming off of line 1 and 2, we got a transformer here, which is stepping down the voltage from 208 to 120. Coming off my X1, we're going into a fuse here, so we're able to protect this circuit in case of a surge of power. So coming out of this fuse, we're going to be going into my E-stop here, which will then go into my reset button here, which once initiated, it will power on this SPR here and latch this circuit on to create our e-stop circuit. I got normally open contacts for this SPR on wrong 90, 120, and 500. So here's the first normally open. Here's the next one. And over here would be the other contact, the AFC switch. Next rung here this rung is just basically letting you know that there is power on going into this LED. It's just going straight from the power into the light. So whenever it's turned on, it will 
turn this LED on here. Next one here is coming from this relay here, and this is this contact closes whenever the bypass selector switch is powered on, and once the bypass is powered on, it will turn on this LED indicating that bypass is being used. Next one here is SPR relay here, or a contact from the SPR. And this, the reason we are using the contact here is so that when e-stop is pressed, it will cut power from all the relays which are powering dock and DC, which can be found over here, powering the motor. So we don't want power to be to the motor at all when the e-stop is pressed in. On this first rung here, we just got it going into the AFC switch going into a BC contact here, creating an interlock so when BC or dock is running, not the other one, can run at the same time, causing any issues. From that BC, just going into the dock A1 here, and into the A2, which is tied in with this BC A2, and they are both going into the overload here. Next wrong, just coming off the same point of connection here from the SPR, going into the bypass here, and going into the dock, creating another interlock here, going into the BCA1, and then coming out the A2, tied back in, and then going into the same overload here. So whenever AFC is powered on, it's going to power this dock relay. And when dock is powered, this is automatic mode. It's going to be closing these switches, or relays, contact. And it will be running off my VFD here, letting the motor know what speed to run at to keep up with the air pressure in the box of the little blower. And bypass, this is just a bypass mode which runs straight off of line power, nothing fancy here, nothing telling it how fast exactly exactly to run. So once BC is closed, then it just closes these contacts coming straight from line power there. And then just having the motor run normally by itself. So here we have some auxiliary contacts which are attached onto this dock here, which is working with the automatic mode. So this STF here, this is just a forward rotation start, and this SD is just a contact input common. This uh, two port here is a zero to five to 10 volts or zero to 10 volts. And this is just where we are coming off of like our analog voltage input and outputs so we can have readings from the sensors that's what this is going on here and my AM is a indicator frequency meter which would be working with my sensor and then this SD is just a, basically a common for these ports here and down below, I have my safety stop input line 1, safety input stop line 2, and then we just have a common terminal here, which they both go to. And that is it for my AutoCAD of the little blower. So here is my program for the little blower. Very basic PID loop here, coming with some scaling. So I'm scaling my analog sensor here from my point IO card here. <clears throat> and 
with nothing running here, just the atmospheric pressure, I'm reading around 7,600, round that to like 8,000. The sensor has a minimum value of 1,600 and an input max of 1,700 there. 17,000, excuse me. And so the scaled min here, I'm going to zero, and my scaled max, I am going to 10. And with an output here, we got my analog output, and that's around four, which I am bringing down into this process variable of my PID here. And this control variable, is coming from my analog voltage output card here and it has a range of 0 to 10 volts 10,000 being 10, 0 being 0, 5,000 being 5 so I can change how much voltage is being applied if I go to my controller tags here and go into my fourth card here and I can change that from 10,000 all the way down to zero. And I'll show you here my HMI. I got how much voltage is being applied there coming from here. And I got my pressure here, which is coming from here. So if I go into, if I start the process here, let me go back to my HMI. You will be able to see the pressure change. So there it went on and off there, and you can see it change. Let me show you how this voltage here will change once I go back into program mode here. Change that to 5,000. And then you can see here that it has changed. Also a very basic HMI with a very basic program. There's not much to be done here besides show pressure or how much voltage is being applied there. You're not needing to turn anything off with an HMI or stop anything. So yeah, there's my HMI and program for the little blower.